vintage Hitachi black and white console tube television. This set was made for the Japanese market. I assume it was sold in Japan. So this is something special, something very unique and different to find here in the United States. Earphone and recorder outputs on the front of the set. The model is a T48C and this is a grand console. It's got this kind of basket weave speaker grill. And the legs are, uh, have a very, of course, oriental style to them. Very classy. This is going to just be an analysis video, and at the end of this video, I'm going to include a little footage of picking the set up. Uh, the cabinet is in fair shape. This has got like a fairly high gloss finish. And unfortunately, it's, it's not perfect. A quick note on this video. Acquiring this set and the time to pick it up and the gas to go get it uh, was not cheap. And it was destined to become a dog bed because out here in the, the West Coast, um, repurposing is extremely popular. And the trendy... Uh, Zoomer crowd have kind of unlimited money for stuff like this and repurposing it. So saving this cost me a little bit from the repurposers. So I'm running a full ad package on this video. I hate uh, mid-roll ads personally and I usually keep them turned off on all current videos. So I just want to throw that out there and thank you for de dealing with the interruptions. So uh, thanks for your support on saving this because like I said, it was, it was due to become a, a humidor. We have the original earphone jack and it looks like a replacement light bulb. We have what appears to be all the original paperwork. I did some limited research last night and Japan used a format called NTSCJ, which apparently is compatible with the North American format. Uh, the channeling is different up to a certain point and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Japan also used a 100 volt line they did not use 117 or 120 like the united states did um of course i can't read this i'm gonna have to get the google translate app out I did briefly read about Japan having a licensing fee on their televisions that supported the NHK, the public broadcaster in Japan. So if you own a TV, you paid a yearly licensing fee to have that TV. I'm just going to scan over this real quick because, of course, my audience is primarily North American. And um, I 
we don't see stuff like this. Here's the schematic. And of course, electronics are a universal language. We don't have to speak a specific language to understand the base schematic. I'm gonna try and very slowly scan over the schematic. If it will stay in focus. The CRT is a 590AB4. Here's the power supply. Horizontal output tube is a 12G-B7. Damper is a 12R-K19. Those, those are not numbers I'm familiar with. Of course, 12BH7 is a com, no, common number. 6CG7 is a common number. 2HA5... Uh, I believe Zenith used that, 6HA5, the tuner front end. Twelve BY7, of course, is a common video output tube. So this schematic is laid out exactly like a SAMS or any television schematic vertical sublinearity man I bet this would be hard to find if you didn't have it there it is in 4k glory Here's the instruction manual. It's a T48C. Here's a, our tube chart. Guess that's supposed to symbolize our record player connected to our TV right there. Gotta love it. And I believe it talks about that more right here. So it's a lot like any manual that would come with a RCA or Zenith. It's just uh, do not expose TV to sun, rain, wind, pesticide spray bottles or chemicals in a bottle. I love these animations. These are brilliant. You're getting to look at something here that's not very common. So we got our tube chart. I'm not sure what this is. 
I'm not exactly sure what this is. This looks like one of the circuit board prints. Now this style of console was popular in the United States in the 50s, this style of black and white console. I'll point out some of the differences, of course, how narrow the set is and that it does not have a bump on the back for the CRT. I don't know what year this is. We're going to try and figure that out right now. I don't see any hardcore date codes. It's got a six by nine there and a tweeter. And you'll notice it's made out of all plywood and hardwood. There is no uh, particle board or OSB in this thing at all. So look at the chassis. Check out the complement of power resistors. It's still a bit of a mystery if it's a hundred volt set or a hundred or was has the option here that maybe these resistors will let you change something and it'll change it to 110 or 120 volts. Like this. I wonder what this is for. Anyway, this looks like our IF strip. IF and video. I'm trying to move slow here. This is our auxiliary phonograph input. Interesting that it's stamped in English. At the end of the video, she, the seller, powers it up. But we'll do a we'll do a repair resurrection on it. Wow, look at that. Lots of these lovely Japanese capacitors. And I, I really, they're such junk. You know, but I hate to get rid of them because they, you're really taking something that's very rare and unique here in the States and you're going to botch a bunch of Chinese or American made parts into it. That almost seems criminal. But we'll do what we need to do to get it to work in part two, which will be probably in a month or two. Okay, this is for the speaker connections. Fifty-two. This just or is that 512? This just doesn't appear to be something that would be that old. It looks like 60s Japanese electronics. Okay, this one looks like it says 511 on it.
I tried Googling the model number and searching it even on Yandex and uh, nothing, nothing comes up. Um, I'm looking at this 0766 and I'm just taking a guess that this is probably a mid 60s set. Even though it looks like something that was built in the 50s in the US, the style. I just... I'm just not that familiar with it, to be totally honest. I'm going to take Google Translate to the paperwork. So check this out. Bookmarks for enjoying Hitachi TV. A quiet place that is not exposed to sunlight or heat and little humidity and heat. Please note, attaching the legs. Ultra, ultra large, wide, 23 inch console TV manufactured for Hitachi. I mean, you, you can't expect perfect uh, You can't expect anything perfect out of this. You know, this is doing pretty good. I'm trying to find a date. When the image is cool, adjust it so that it looks the clearest. Okay, so here we go. Here are the, the specifications. So it has channel 1 through 12. Um, 17 balls with cathode ray tube. Okay, so we're going to call them vacuum balls from now on. Okay, uh, there we go. 100 volts, 50 or 60 cycles. Of course, that doesn't matter because it's... Uh, series string it doesn't use a power transformer with a hundred and ten volt switching tap hundred and forty watts seventy five watts when the s switching to audio and it talked about um, it talked about it has instant on in it and it has a vacation switch to turn instant on off. Ooh, printed in Japan. Well, we know that, but what's the date? Okay, this is that. I believe this is the warranty card that was never filled out. And it looks like it says year month repair ticket so ah, this is a trip so this is your warranty card you fill out here which nothing's been filled out and this right here is like 
what you do professionally, where the TV is going to be used, what age you are, where you bought it, where this is, this is all the, so very interesting. I wonder if this set was, uh, sold in Japan and just brought straight here and never used in Japan because nothing's been filled out here and the date the purchase date is on the front the purchase date the, these are service notes every time it's serviced or repaired this is filled out and this is the year and who bought it and the year and all that I found this down in there. It looks like some something if you change a tube. Let's see what this says. The cathode resistance of the horizontal output tube V14 removed and the cathode is directly it will be grounded. R722 in series with the screen resistor 721 of the horizontal output tube V14, 560 yeah. It looks like the Supermat covers the 590 AB4, so 6.3 C3. Let's uh, check the CRT. As you'll see at the end of the video, the seller fires it up which I didn't really recommend, but since she had been doing it, and well, you'll see the history of it at the end of the video. 6.3, black and white, 6.3. Uh, let's see. Shorts, shorts gun balance or cut off let's see what we get here the raster that i saw on it was quite dim now that could be capacitors or that could be a weak crt i always tend to lean towards a weak crt whenever i see a dim raster so let's Let's give this a minute but I did see a raster that's why I purchased it if I had not seen anything I, I was okay let's give this a few minutes to warm up see what happens not looking good so far is it looking at the channelization frequencies this is Japan right here so channel 8 is 193.25, 197.75. Channel 10 in North America is the same. So the Japanese TV on channel 8 will match our broadcast channel 10. So what I'm going to have to do is feed it. Uh, channel 10 off of a modulator and it should work the CRT is not looking happy um, oops maybe a uh, maybe a dog bed is in its future I might try and whack it here with rejuve one I hate to do that um, I really hate to do that she said that it used to work 15 years ago it had a good you know it had a good bright snowy picture but whatever that for whatever that's worth Yeah, I, I, I want to be careful with this. This is a good way to ruin something that's already bad. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I've got the filament voltage bumped up to 8 right now. Uh, I'm going to bump it again on rejuve 1. Here we go. 
pop it there and then what I'm gonna do is let me let me bring the uh, let me bring the voltage back down oh wait okay let me bring the voltage back down 6.3 Well, that seemed to have made a difference. Still no cutoff, but at least it has emissions now. I mean, that's workable. You know, when I come back to this in a few weeks, it'll be interesting to see if it holds that. I believe I found a date that kind of coincides with everything on this capacitor if the thing will focus 65 I believe that's probably about when this was made actually I think it's a little bit it's a little bit newer than that because that's a Nichicon capacitor um, that would coincide with 66 and that would just kind of fit in with what I see here. I just wonder if I can get a date off this one here. Wow, capacitors made in Japan. Imagine that. Nope, no date code on this one. All right, it's been sitting for about 20 minutes. Let's just bring the filament voltage back up here and see see what happens. It's completely cooled off after its rejuvenation. So let's see if there's any hope. It sure looks like there is. Let it sit for a minute. I think these birds are here looking for Glen Waters. They think this is a Curtis Mathis repair facility or something. See that? Where's Grantley? Oh, he's out back having a cigarette with the dog. Okay, so notice it's actually falling. So let me get this disconnected. At least we could get this thing working and look at it before the CRT totally dies. So we'll get back into this in probably about a month. And uh, I'm gonna end the video with some just some footage I got on the road. Picking up the Hitachi Grand Console with dual rotating earphone and recorder outputs. So I will modulate, I will set my modulator to channel 10 US and we will put this on channel eight and it should work, hopefully. Very unique, different set to see featured in the United States. I gotta point out how elegant and high quality the hardware is on this compared to something like a Zenith, you know, with its little plastic twist lock things. Look at that, the metal insert, no particle board, and what's interesting is, it. I understand that we were a much more nationalistic country then than we are now. But in this era, Japanese products were considered inferior. Kind of like Chinese stuff is now a little bit. And um, I guess looking back and comparing from a different place and time... Um, I don't I don't know what to really think about that but yeah everything is 
you know, threaded with metal inserts in the wood. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a whole different level of quality than a set made in the, the States with its, you know, wood screws going into particle board. But I still love my Zenus and RCAs. I'm never going to let that go. It's been in perfect condition since I bought it. It used to turn on with the snow. Now it's uh, it warms up and it still has all the stuff on the back of it. The earplugs still in the sealed little container, the directions. Hey, so, because usually I would check the picture too yeah. before I it's all bought sealed. something like this. But it's sealed. Since, sealed up. Si since you're saying that it does produce or light or yeah. that it did and you yeah. haven't used it much I'm not going to worry about that yeah. yeah so just when you shut it off it goes down to a little circle light right now yeah and it came from a thrift store yeah probably about 15, 15 it, years ago in this area uh, north okay <laughs> like Riverside yes. Or yes okay okay all right years ago. I don't even know if it's still there. are you going to turn it on or sure. This is a no-no, actually. Without, you're supposed to replace all the capacitors because the capacitors in these they just die from age. Oh. And it can actually destroy the TV by, by doing this. By turning it on. Yeah, fix it. yeah. You really should. But since you've already okay. done it, I'm not going to stress over it. Okay. Makes a hum. And you say it drops down to a circle when you turn it off? Yeah, let me do that. Yeah. I don't know if it's warmed up enough, but let's see. Okay. So it used to come up and be brighter than yeah, that. Yeah, it huh? used to be a whole snowy screen. Where is the brightness on this? I don't know. But you, and it used to be able to hear it when you change the channel, but it doesn't. Oh yeah, I see something yeah. there. Yeah, we should not be running it. Okay, cool. Turn it off? Yeah. Very cool. So anything else to add to the history of it, or is that it? No, that's it. Cool. I'm headed out to pick up a 1950s Hitachi black and white console TV that popped up on Marketplace. This is uh, about an hour and a half drive each way from the house. This is a rare bird. I hope the CRT is good. Uh, it's not cheap. This says that this is an RV resort. Am I going into some kind of... Ah, Roji Muffler Dizyla Zebra, I guess. Crap. Okay, this is what you call death by GPS. Uh, that was a KOA campground. And so... Continue on California 79 North for four miles. 
So, yeah, I just really, like, didn't look at what I was, didn't look at where I was going. I just kind of, like, was in a hurry, so, yeah. Brilliant. Total award-winning fail. This is a still fairly rural area. A lot of older people that have money uh, move out here from LA and other big cities to run out the clock. It's um, a little bit slower of a life, but it, it gets much hotter out here. So, Hoot Ranch. Not as much congestion. Not yet. Eventually, the city folk will move out here and fill this all up, and then it won't be pleasurable or desirable anymore. Look at all the citrus. This look like grapefruit. Lots of grapefruit. I'll probably put this at the end of the video. People in general that watch TV video. People don't usually like, uh, what do you call it? Road trip videos in a TV video. So I'll stick this on the end. Okay, is that this right here? Uh, this stupid. Oh, dirt road, huh? Is really? Continue on one mile. Oh, really? Rolling a dirt road to get this sucker, huh? Definitely different. Well, actually, not for me. Love me a TV come up off a dirt road. Supposed to be getting a whole lot more here in the next day or so. I'm talking about several feet. Taking me to the point of no return. I think I've already gone there. 